Joe Tang, and I work here at the Tompkins County Public Library. And today, I'm going to show you how to build your own Dust Buddy robot. Now, a Dust Buddy robot is a robot that you program to turn on after a certain amount of time to dance. It's a really great way to get a laugh or just have a smile after all those long Zoom meetings. So with a Dust Buddy, there are different materials that we can use. We can use scrapbooking paper, which gives a really funny shaking dance. We can use origami paper, which is the same thing that we have here, which we'll show you how this dances in a minute. So that gives a, a really funky dance. And then you can even use construction paper. And this here is very stiff, so you'll get the hair and the arms moving of your dust buddy. So let's see how this works. So with the one that you'll be making, you can have two options. You can power it through a USB port, or optionally, you can get a rechargeable 9-volt battery and power it that way. This one's powered by a rechargeable 9-volt battery. So let's see how this works. So I'm going to power it on here. It's going to go to neutral position. Then after about five seconds, it'll start dancing for us. There we go. Look at that funky dance. So these are really fun to build. And usually with the materials that we'll show you, you can build up to four of them. And you can just switch them out depending on your mood in the day. So let's head on over and check out what the materials are to make your very own Dust Buddy robot. OK, let's take a look at the electronic components that you'll need for this robot. So first off, you're going to need a micro USB cable or a matching one to the Arduino you use. In this tutorial, we'll be using the Arduino Nano microcontroller. Now these are fairly inexpensive and they usually come with their micro USB cables. Next, you will need a breadboard that fits the Arduino that you're using. Now, this one is a little bit larger, but it's one I had on hand. Um, so you definitely want a breadboard so you don't have to solder anything. After that, you'll need three wires with pins on both ends, one red to represent power, you can use orange too, one brown to represent ground, or black, you can use black for ground too, and another wire to signify the signal. The signal is the data that we're sending to the servo to make your robot dance. Speaking of servo, you'll need a Hobby 9 gram servo with its servo horns, which are the little plastic pieces that come with it. You also need the screws that come with it. So usually a servo will come with three or four uh, servo horns, so you can make um, three or four different dust buddies. And then optionally, we do have the rechargeable 9 volt battery and the uh, 9 volt battery case with a switch. And you don't need this if you just want to power your robot through a USB port. Now that we have those, after that we'll talk about the tools here. So a good tool to have is a nice plastic nipper or a wire cutter. This will help cut any of the pipe cleaners. After that, we'll use a ruler. We have some scissors and a Phillips head screwdriver. From what I have found, all nine volt or all nine gram servos come with Phillips head screws. Then we'll use some craft material here. So I have some pipe cleaners, um, duct tape, double side tape helps as well. Now you can use your own adhesives. I have hot glue and glue stick. I'm going to be using origami paper for the one that I'll be building in this video, so glue stick works really well. But I'm going to need hot glue to secure the servo horn so we can connect our robot's uh, dust buddy to the servo. Uh, you can use ribbons for arms and hair, as you saw in many of the dust buddies I've made. And then for our dust buddy, we can use different papers. So I have origami paper. This is also a good way to get rid of your scrap papers. I have scrapbooking paper. It's really up to you. You can use uh, do cardboard or use a recycled water bottle. And then for the base of the robot, we need some recycled cardboard. Now this cardboard, you're gonna to want to cut to size so it can fit the servo, the Arduino Nano, and if you're using the battery, a battery compartment. So it doesn't really matter. And you can do fun designs too, like you can do a heart or a diamond or a triangle, it's up to you. And then we have some popsicle sticks. These are what keeps our robot on the servo. Um, and you can use uh, barbecue skewers or cut out a piece from cardboard, but I found these to be very sturdy and they don't bend or wear out. Definitely want some googly eyes requirement here. There's quite a few in here, you can use different ones. Or you can just draw on your uh, Dust Buddy's eyes or other features. And those are all the materials you'll need to make your own Dust Buddy. Okay, let's start with the first step here to making your Dust Buddy. So you'll need a piece of cardboard. So this is about uh, six inches by seven inches, but again, just make it fit all your parts. It doesn't have to be a specific size. 
Then we have a small piece of cardboard here that should let the servo rest nicely on it. Now you want to make sure that it is flush with the servo here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to glue this right here to about the center of the far side of this cardboard. So I'm going to take my hot glue gun here. Now be careful with the hot glue. It is hot. Don't burn yourself. I'm going to put that at the edge here. Now hot glue we have is quick drying. Um, if you don't have quick drying hot glue, uh, just let it sit for a second before we attach the servo. Next we're going to want to attach the servo. Now this servo has a sticker on one side, so we're going to glue down the side that doesn't have a sticker. Now if you ever wanted to reuse these servos, you can just put some rubbing alcohol on the um, glue and it will release it. So we're going to center that. Now if you notice here, it's nice and flush with the edge. This uh, gear here is not behind the cardboard. That's very important that it's not. So we're going to let that sit there. And we're going to push the wire out to the side here. Next, what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your breadboard. Now your breadboard should have adhesive on the back. And we're going to peel that off. And we're just going to place that uh, right here in the middle. Now we're going to take our Duino Nano and we're going to plop that right in the center, okay? Now, depending on which side you want this to sit for your desk buddy, make sure the USB is pointing that side. So I want my desk buddy to be facing me like this. So I'm going to plug it in so that way the cord will go right to my laptop. So just give it a nice firm press. Now this might take a few seconds to get in. Uh, don't force it. Whatever you do, just be gentle and firmly press it in. There we go. Now we want to make sure there's about equal sides to each side of the Arduino. And I'll show you a close-up of what the Arduino looks like because it's pretty tiny. But there's one side with A and a number, and the other side has D with a bunch of numbers. Just make sure they're equal. Now that you have that, we're going to wire up the servo. So you're going to take your red wire here that has both pins on it, and we're going to attach that to the input here that has a red wire. So see the red wires in the middle? And I believe most servos have their power wire in the middle. Next, we're going to take our ground wire, which would be brown or black, and we're going to plug that into the ground wire, which is the brown or black wire. And then we're going to take our signal wire, which can be any color, and we're going to plug that in with the orange wire. Now, this brown wire on your Arduino Nano will be plugged in on a pin that says GND. There's many pins with GND, so it doesn't matter which one you do. So I'm going to put it over here. That way I can just wrap that down later. This is going to go to the 5 volt pin, which is on the opposite side. And then this here I'm going to put on the pin D3 for a digital 3. Okay. Now of course we'll show you a close up of this uh, wiring schematic in the video, so that way you can look up nice and close. Now that you have that, all we have to do is program the servo to be in its neutral position. So we're going to head on over to a laptop and show you that right now. But what a neutral position of the servo is, is 90 degrees. So that way your robot's um, desk buddy stands straight up and down. Because a servo goes between 90 and 180 degrees, or 90 and 0 degrees. So 0 being over here, so it would go over here to 0. And then it would go back to center at 90, and then it would go to 180 over here. <music> Alright, let's program our desk buddy to dance. Now to do that, you'll need to have the Arduino IDE program. Now in the description of this video, I've included a link to where you can download it. I've also included a link to a tutorial that shows you how to download it and how to connect your Arduino to it. So if you've gone through that part, let's start. So go ahead and attach your Arduino to your computer and let's start writing some code. So the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to go above void setup here. So I'm going to click up there and hit return. And we need to use the library. So in the Arduino C++ coding language, there's a bunch of pre-made code stored in many different libraries. So for this code, we are going to use the library servo.h. Now .h stands for header. If you're interested in header files, head over to the W3School website and take the tutorial on C++. So what I'm going to do is hashtag include, 
then we use the arrow here and I'm going to say servo with a capital S dot H and you notice it turned orange there and I'm going to close this up with another um, arrow. Next we need to make an instance of the servo library or an object of a servo library so that we can use the methods and pre-written codes in our own code. So to do that I'm going to say servo my servo. So my servo the name here is the instance of our servo and then semicolon. So a semicolon is needed at, every, at the end of every line of code. So think of a semicolon as a period at the end of an English sentence, while a semicolon is a period at the end of a coding um, sentence. So we have our instance of our servo. Now we need to let our um, computer, our microcomputer here, or our microcontroller, know where that servo is. So to do that, we're going to first make a variable. Now a variable is just a container that stores a value and has a name. And every time we use that name in our code, it knows that it has that value. Now, when we make a variable, it has to have a type, a name, and that value. So I'm going to say int for integer. So we're using a whole number, so we're going to use the type integer. And I'm going to name it d3 after the pin that I attach it to. And then I'm going to set it to using the set to operator, not the equal sign. In coding, an equal sign is two equal signs. In coding, one equal sign is the set to um, operator. So we're going to set this to the value of 3. So now every time we use the word d3, the computer knows that there's a 3 stored there. So now we're going to move into void setup, and this is where we're going to end this first code. We're going to actually overwrite this code later, but right now what we want to do is put our servo in a neutral position so we can attach our light buddy. So underneath this comment, so a comment has two slashes, and in this programming language, if the computer sees two slashes, it ignores it as plain white space. So underneath here, what I'm going to do is type servo, or my servo, sorry, my servo, so the instance we made, dot and we're going to use the dot to signify that we are using some pre-written code known as a method, dot attach. And then inside the parentheses here, I'm going to say D3. So now our microcontroller knows that at the D3 pin, we've attached a servo. Next, I'm going to make the servo go to its neutral position. So I'm going to use the dot write method, which allows us to move the servo through our code to a different angle. So if you remember, our neutral angle is 90 degrees. So I'm going to do my servo dot write, and then I'm going to type 90, and then I'm going to put a semicolon. So now that we have that code done, we're going to verify that this will work. So we're going to hit this check mark up here. Now if you haven't saved your file already, it'll pop up asking you to save your file here. So now that we have that, what we are going to do is go to Tools and attach our Arduino Nano to our computer. So I have mine attached to COM6, or port COM6. If you have multiple um, USB devices attached, sometimes they'll show up here. So you might have to switch them out if the code doesn't upload. Next, you have your processors. Now, depending on which Arduino Nano you've purchased, if you've purchased a cheaper one, it will most likely use Arduino at Mega 328P old bootloader. But the one that I have here uses the new one, so at Mega 328P. So if it doesn't upload, try switching out one for one of these processors. And if it really doesn't upload, make sure that you check to make sure that Arduino Nano is um, selected. So now that we have that, what I'm going to do is hit the upload button. Now it's going to compile the code again. And then you'll see down through here that's uploading. And when it says AVR dude done, thank you, you know it's been successful. And I just heard my servo kick on. You'll hear the servo kick on real quick and go to its 90 degree position. All right, so we have that. Let's move on to the next code and overwrite it so we can make our light buddy dance. All right, let's add on to this code so we can overwrite the original code that we set up here so our light buddy or our desk buddy or light buddy will be able to dance for us. So to do that, what I'm going to do is use some pre-written code known as delay. So delay is a pre-written function that pauses our microcontroller for a certain amount of milliseconds. So to do that, we're just going to type delay and it should turn orange. And then for three seconds, I want to pause for, so that would be 3,000. Then after that, I want our robot to dance for a certain amount of time. So to do that, I'm going to use a for loop. Now, a for loop just iterates up or down depending on the number you set. So to do that, I'm going to type for, parentheses, int i, i for iterator, and I'm going to set that to 0. Then I'm going to say loop until i, and I'm going to use the less than sign. 
So I'm going to loop until i is equal to or greater than 10. And that's what this says here. And then in order to add and change our variable's value, um, every time we loop, I'm going to do this here, i plus plus, which will change the value that's stored in int by 1. That's what the plus plus stands for. Next, I'm going to do two curly brackets. Now, if you do one curly bracket and press Enter, it'll make a second one in the Arduino IDE. So everything within these curly brackets here will be repeated. Same as you see with the void loop, everything within these print curly brackets here will be repeated forever. So now that we have that, we're going to program our desk buddy to dance. To do that, I'm going to add another delay. So I'm going to do delay, and I'm going to delay for about half a second, so 500 milliseconds. Then I'm going to do my servo dot write, and I'm going to go to 70 degrees. Don't forget the semicolon. Then I'm going to delay again, and I'm going to do 500 milliseconds. And then I'm going to say my servo. I'm going to go to the other side here. Dot write 110. Now let's do 120. I'll give it a nice swing. And now once this loop breaks out, so once this loop completes, it's um, 0 to 9, so it'll go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then when it hits 10, it'll break out. I'm going to reset the servo to our neutral position. So we can just copy this here and change its value. So outside the curly bracket here, I'm going to set this back to 90. So now that we have this, so what this dance will do is make the robot rock back and forth. Now, if you go on to the Arduino website, there's plenty of tutorials on how to control a servo. So if you want a nice slow swaying dance, you can look up how to iterate a uh, servo smoothly. Um, but I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. But this here will just make it shake back and forth and do a crazy jig. So let's upload this code to our desk buddy. So to do that, let's just verify that everything's good. Now we have a error here. Now it says expected before the four. So what I misplaced here is the semicolon. Let's see, where did I miss the semicolon? Ah, yes, I missed the semicolon um, right here with delay 3000. So it's the expected before four. So go up to the four and then add a semicolon. Now let's verify to see if that worked. And there we go. Now if you see that with a curly bracket here, that just means that we accidentally deleted this one down here. So let's add another one there. But everything looks good. So let's upload it and see if it works. So we're going to upload to our Arduino. Now, if for some reason it doesn't upload, just go back into Tools and make sure everything is connected properly. Ours uploaded here, and it's running. OK, so now that we have that, let's attach our light buddy, or dust buddy, and watch it dance. Okay, now that we have the electronics sorted out, let's make a dust buddy. So what you'll need is a piece of paper or cardboard or a plastic water bottle. And this piece of paper here is a six by six piece of origami paper. Now what I'm going to do is take some glue stick and give it a healthy helping of glue along one side here and roll it into a cylinder. So I'm just going to go like that. And then I'm going to take this and roll it into a nice cylinder. And then we'll just hold that and let that dry for a second. Now we should have a cylinder here for our dust buddy. And I'm going to decorate it. So I'm going to take some googly eyes. So I'm going to do just one very large googly eye. I'm going to take some hot glue here and glue that on. Hot glue seems to make googly eyes stick really well. So I'm just going to put a nice little bit of hot glue. Again, be careful, hot glue is very hot. And I'm going to attach that right to my desk buddy. Now ours is quick drying hot glue again, so it should cool quite fast. Um, if it's not quick drying, let it cool a little bit before you stick your finger in there and press it down. Now that we have that, I am going to add a cool face using some pipe cleaner. So I'm just going to bend this into a fun shape. It can be any shape you like. So I think something like that is cool, and I'll make him a smiling dust buddy. And then I'm going to take some hot glue again, and I'm going to just glue on the smiley face here. This one you might want to just bend and curve a little bit, and then just 
press that down nice and firm, and then pop it back out. And there we go, we have a face on our dust buddy. Now the next step is to add some funky hair. So for that, I got some ribbon. So I'm just gonna cut a few strands here. Do that. And the more random, the more funky it is. So that's cool to do, just do some random cuts. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it in like that with some hot glue. So I'm gonna cross it over in the middle like that, or roughly in the middle. So again, ours cools fast. So with your hot glue, make sure it cools a bit before you do this with your finger. So we're just gonna do that. Now it's nice and crossed over. I'm going to take that side and I'm gonna glue it to the inside here, the top inside of our dust buddy. So we're gonna take the hot glue again, do a dab, and we're going to just press fit that right on in. Oh, it looks like my hot glue didn't dry quite well enough. So if you have this issue with your um, glue that is popping off, what you can do is take your screwdriver and just lightly uh, scratch it up in the back, and this will give you some grip. Just be careful you don't pierce the paper. So the glue eye won't work as a glue eye. So let's put some more glue there. And then we'll press fit that back in. Now remember to let it cool first. And let that dry. Now if you have these strands, this is a good time to pull off all the hot glue strands while it's drying there. And now we're gonna add some fun little arms. So I'm gonna grab some more ribbon. So I have this cool yellow here. And what I'm gonna do is just gonna cut little hoops. So one and two here. And I'm gonna glue these together in hoops like that. So a little dab. And press fit together. And then I'm gonna glue these to the side of my dust buddy here. A little dab there. And you can do different arm positions. So this one I'm gonna to have to a side, to the side here of this dust buddy. And to the other side, I'm gonna make it look like this dust buddy that they're waving at you. So we're gonna do a dab. Make another hoop. Like that. And then we're gonna put another dab on this side. And I'm gonna make this dust buddy look like it's waving when it dances. There we go. Now we're gonna let that dry for a second. So you can see our dust buddy right here. It looks like it's ready to dance and jive. Once that all dries, flip it around to the bottom. And then with your dust buddy, you're gonna take a popsicle stick and we're gonna glue it to the bottom of the cylinder. This one put a good helping of glue on it. Now I sort of start three, one quarter up and go down to about three quarters. And then I'm just going to press fit that right on in. Now this one, even if you have quick, you got quick uh, dry glue, you will have to hold it there for a second. All right, so now that we have our dust buddy pretty much ready to go, what I'm going to do now is take a servo horn and I'm going to glue it to the bottom here. Now you'll notice that some servo horns have two pieces like this one right here has two different horns on it. You can take your plastic snips and snip that to make another one. And you don't have to throw away that piece. You can just hot glue that to the top of this piece to make it even stronger. But for this video, we're going to use this one here. Now you don't want to lose those tiny little screws. So I'm gonna put that off to the side somewhere safe. So don't lose those. Now what we're going to do is hot glue this right to the bottom. So the horn of this servo here should be pointing up towards the cylinder, okay? So this one you want a lot of hot glue. Just right at the bottom. Always remember to let it cool for a sec. All right, it's quick cool, so I'm gonna push that on before it goes away. Now you will get a lot of strands, um, just as this drying pulls off. And now that we have the servo horn on there, you have your very own dust buddy. Good job. So the final step is to screw this uh, dust buddy onto the servo and watch it dance. Oh, and one other tip here, and I actually did this backwards. Uh-oh. So you want to make sure the side that clips onto the gear facing the other way. So 
So I'm just going to peel this off real quick, apply some more glue to reheat it, and then I'll push it back down in. So remember, this side attaches to the gear, so it should be facing to the back of your dust buddy. So I'm going to attach that back on there. And you can see right there, that's the way it should look. So you should have the area where you put the screw through on top and flip it over. That's the part that goes on the gear. Alrighty, so now we're going to attach this to our Dust Buddy robot. Okay, now that we have everything programmed and running with our microcontroller, let's complete our Dust Buddy robot by attaching our Dust Buddy to it. So to do that, what you're going to do is have the Dust Buddy face in front of you. And what I'm going to need to do is just attach this right on over the servo here. And then I'm going to take the little screw and I'm going to put that right in there. Now, if you got hot glue in it, you might have to take the screwdriver and peel away the hot glue that got in the way. So now we have that. Just make sure it's attached straight on there. And we'll just screw that right on in. Now, don't screw it too tight. Just tight enough that it'll stay on. So you don't want to strip any of the gears. Now that we have that, what you'll do is take your laptop or other USB um, capable uh, device and we're going to attach the USB cable here. Now off camera I just taped down the wires to make it a little bit cleaner and neater. So let's attach this and see if it works. So it should go to a 90 degree position. And there we go, now it's dancing. Now you notice it's a little bit off angle, so when it stops here, we'll unplug it and try again. This one does look quite a fun little dance. Okay, so we're gonna stop it there. So we know that's 90 degrees. And we're just gonna lightly unscrew this. And then we're just gonna recenter our light body. I'll screw that back in. And let's try that again. So we'll plug that in. There we go, it's staying straight up and down now. And now, it should dance every three seconds. And there you go, you have your own dust buddy. So have fun, experiment with some other code. Um, and if you want to add a battery uh, to it, just uh, go back in the video to where we show you the schematic, and it's just plugging in two wires. Okay? So I hope you have fun, and go make something awesome. Thanks for watching.